What's going on everybody? So for this zoo adventure, I'm in Singapore at one of the world's most famous zoos. This is the Singapore Zoo. So come with me and let's tour this absolutely amazing zoo right here again at the Singapore Zoo. So in here, we've got a couple of Galapagos tortoises. There's a staccato over there, but what's interesting is look at this. They actually have to put up warning signs because there's wild macaques that come into the zoo and they attack people here. I've never been to a zoo before that has had to put up signs saying wild monkeys will attack and murder your children. I think that's what that sign says, isn't it? So right behind me is Orangutan Island. Orangutans live in one of the hottest climates in the world and they walk around with a permanent fur coat. This is such a cool exhibit because you've got gibbons here and they play with the orangutans and then there's also a family of otters that hang out here. This is such an incredible exhibit. Okay, this is pretty cool. Like right up here next to the glass, this orangutan is actually using a tool to get his dinner. That is some really awesome enrichment and this is exactly what they would do out in the wild. So my next adventure that I have planned after I get back to the United States after this trip is I'm planning a trip to Borneo to see these guys in the wild. And if that trip happens, we're going to an orangutan reserve in Borneo. And I may do an entire feature length movie about how the orangutans are just clinging to survival in Borneo. Comment below if you'd like to see a full feature length film of orangutans in the wild in Borneo. Haha. <laughs> That leaf is going, I'll talk, I'll talk, I'll tell you everything. All right, we are heading in to Reptopia. Oh, look at this. So as soon as you walk in, Singapore is home to over 100 species of reptiles. We're gonna find those all on my Dave Kaufman's Reptile Adventures channel. Every species we are, hopefully, I don't know. All right, we're heading in. Whoa. Oh, look at this. Over here, we've got a couple of shingleback skinks. There's one, two, three, four, looks like five of them in there. And what's cool is they've got a little bubble right there that all the kids can go under there and come up and hang with the shinglebacks. Over here, they have a Gila monster. Wow, that one's really pink. This is their enclosure. They've got this whole desert setup. There's probably a couple of them hanging out over there. I can't imagine they only have the one here. Had a look at this big old lazy caiman lizard. Man, he's, God, he's beautiful. Look at the yellows and the oranges on him. And he's got this whole big enclosure all to himself, except for some fishy friends. Oh, I think that's a jaguar cichlid right there. Is that a jaguar? Yeah. Yeah. Here's one of my favorite tree monitors, the green tree monitor. And he's right next door to one of my favorite Asian rat snakes. That's a Melendorf's rat snake. It's also called a thousand flower rat snake. Just a gorgeous snake. Look at the size of this retic. That is just cool. And then right over here is something very cool. And that right there is a crocodile monitor. That's the second largest monitor lizard in the world. So right after we leave the zoo, we are heading to Vietnam and I wanna find these in the wild. That is a big old Burmese python. Hopefully we'll find them. And if we do, you'll see that on my Reptile Adventures channel. But with these exhibits, you always have to look around because right up here, we've got two red-tailed green rat snakes just hanging out in this little bush right here. And these are also native to here in Singapore, but they range all the way up into China. But these are also native to Malaysia. I've seen these in Thailand. These are another one of my favorite Asian rat snakes. So that was the reptile house. That was super cool. Are you gonna open door? Yeah, thank you. So there is a lot more that we have to see at this zoo and we have a little time. As a matter of fact, today, uh, maybe in like six hours we have a flight to Malaysia so we kind of got to blast through the zoo a little bit faster than I would like to but um I don't know. let's go that way
Okay, now I'm geeking out a little bit because right behind me is one of the animals that I really wanted to see when I was in Madagascar. And of course, the chances of us seeing one were pretty slim, but this is a foos. But they're spelled F-O-S-S-A, -S -S and a lot of people call them fossas, but the A is actually silent. The name of this animal is actually foos. And not only is the A silent, but the scientific name Cryptoproctopherox means ferocious creature <laughs> with a hidden anus. And it comes from the Greek crypto, which means hidden, and procta, which means anus. So its anus is concealed by a pouch that contains scent marking glands. And ferox refers to its fearsome nature. All right, so we have just walked in to the aviary. Holy buckets, this place is awesome. And look up there, there's flying foxes and there's a platform up there that you can get to. I'm heading right up there. Okay, now this is weird. Look at that. Like right here by these ducks. Like this is ornamental in the ground and it's like, it looks like a roadkill frog. That is just bizarre. Don't you think that's bizarre, duck? Hey, duck. Duck, don't you think that's bizarre? Look at that, there's a snake right there. A spider right there. Hey, duck, I want to show you something. Come here, duck. Come here, ducky. Ducky doesn't give a duck. <laughs> All right, off we go. Oh, what have you got there, crowned pigeon? You got a big old leaf? Are you showing me your big leaf? That's a beautiful leaf. He's like, no, you cannot have it. I will take it. Okay, you can look at it, but that's it. And then I will take it where you can't get to it. All right, we're going up here to see the flying foxes. Can I see a sloth? <laughs> and we've got a sloth eating his corn and these guys. I absolutely love these guys. That one's male. <laughs> oh, these are so awesome. And then look at this guy over here. Hi, buddy. Prewa squirrels, yeah. Are they also called tricolored squirrels? Yeah, yeah. eating his orange. We're just kind of walking out of the aviary. I happen to look and right here is a, a little friend. Hi. He's just hanging out like right here. Like right here. Hi. So this little guy is called Asaki. Look at this. Just super friendly dude. I ain't got no food for you, buddy, but I got uh, an open hand if that means anything to you at all. all right. Oh my God, look at this. You can just reach out and touch him. Hi. Oh, now that is cool. Oh, hi. Oh, now you're going to grab my finger. Hi, buddy. Oh, it's so good to meet you. Very nice to meet you. Don't bite that finger. Look at this. He just reached out and grabbed my finger. Oh, that is fantastic. He's just like holding my hand. <laughs> Very nice to meet you, buddy. <laughs> Can I have my hand back now? Can I? I'm just going to... I'm just... No? No? You want to hang on to that? All right, uh, I guess I'm I guess I'm a permanent resident of the zoo now. Over here we've got penguins. In the hottest climate on earth we've got penguins. We just associate them with being cold water animals. They're not. I mean, there's penguins in South Africa and the Galapagos and all the way up the South American coast. And it's cool because, like, they swim from underneath here. There's a little underwater bridge here. And then they can go in this cold room and cool off. That's kind of cool. That's a cotton top tamarind. I don't know why they would call them cotton tops. There's got to be a reason for it. I think a more fitting name for that guy would be the Einstein tamarind. He's like, you can't see me. I am under my hat. Quit making fun of my cotton top. I will wear this leaf as a hat. So these are the Hamadreus baboons, and this is one of those species where there's sexual dimorphism, where males look different than females, and also have really ugly butts. And here we have Grandpa telling a story about the days when he could buy monkey chow for only a nickel. Talking about how you couldn't get onions because of rationing, because of the war. And it cost only $5 to get into the zoo, not the $60 it does now. And you can see that the teenage baboons pay no attention to his stories. They couldn't care. They would rather sit there and groom themselves. So like us. All right, I freaking love these guys. These are pygmy hippos, and they're called pygmies because they're small. So pygmy hippos are only found in extreme West Africa, and they actually move by tiptoeing along riverbeds. And of course, like most of Africa's wildlife, they are threatened by deforestation, pollution, and overhunting for bushmeat. 
These guys are pretty long lived. They can live up to 42 years, but they've bred more than 24 pygmy hippos here at this zoo. And here are two of those. All right, something tells me we're getting close to the elephants. Maybe down here where all the people are. There they are, look at those guys. You know, every time I see elephants like this, I can't decide what I like better, Asians or Africans. I like the big ears of the Africans, but these guys have, I, I guess, friendlier faces, maybe, I don't know. But look at this, all these people can just sit here and obviously they do presentations here. Good morning to everyone here. Welcome to Elephants of Asia. Okay, we like to extend a warm welcome to you guys. Uh, as you can see, our elephants have come on down to greet you guys. All right, let's check out the Treetops Trail. Oh, this is cool down there. They've got a false gharial. That's a big dude too. And then up here in the trees somewhere, there's a uh, signing. There he is, there he is. That's cool. Oh, there's another false gharial. That guy is huge. You can't really tell how big this guy is. So let's find a kid to throw down there so we can get some perspective. No, we're not, no, ma'am, don't do that. No, I'm, I'm ma'am, don't. Hang on tight, hey, seriously. That is just a big, big dude. So one of the things that I love about the Singapore Zoo is how they have those kinds of animal education presentations where people can get up close with the animals, learn about the animals, and it's really immersive, really educational, and really awesome. So anyway, guys, if you ever find yourself in Singapore, this zoo absolutely lives up to the hype. This was one of the coolest zoos I've ever had an opportunity to tour. And guys, as always, thanks for watching, and until the next zoo adventure, love the planet, feed your animal obsession, and rattle on. Oh, my God.